Mississippi. An underwriting grant from the Grumman Corporation. Grumman Corporation, a Long Island company committed to education. Send that rookie in, Robin. Junior Berman, it's finally this way, Claire. You're late. You were supposed to take a package to Tulsa, Oklahoma, four days ago. What happened? Uh, Cardinals, sir. Cardinals. Cardinals? The St. Louis Cardinals were playing the Cleveland Indians in St. Louis. I stopped off on my way back from Tulsa. Then the package was delivered on time? Well, you know our motto, sir. Right. Early afternoon, the latest surf. I like your spirit. I like your enthusiasm. I like your eagerness. What did Tulsa say when you got there? They said, you're late. But sir, it was only by one day. Wow, me. Because, sir, you're the best messenger trade in the business. You're right. I have a business to fly here. Your mission is twofold. You mean I'm delivering long underwear? No, two packages. Oh. First package starts here in Detroit, where we are, fly directly to Bemidji, Minnesota. Land of the loon. Could mean trouble. <laughs> Second package starts in Detroit and fly directly to Columbus, Nebraska. Oh, here. one day? Oh, sir, can I take a taxi after all? I'm just learning how to fly. Ten hut. Remember our motto? Yes, sir. People call us yes, up and yes, ask yes, to Yes, 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 now. But first, do you know how far you're flying? Well, I can calculate it, sir. I can calculate it by using this map scale here. With this trusty ruler, I can determine that the distance to Bemidji is 10, 1,100 kilometers from Detroit, sir. 1,100 kilometers? And how long is the round trip? You mean, what is the distance to Bemidji and back, sir? Correct. Oh, that's easy, sir. That's twice the distance. Which is? 2,200 kilometers. Very good. And the distance to Columbus, Nebraska? That's 1,200 kilometers, sir. 1,200. And the round trip would be double that. Which is? 2,400 kilometers, sir. Very good. Uh, sir? Junior? Well, just look. By going to Bemidji and back, mm -hmm. and then going to Columbus and back, mm -hmm. that's 2,200 kilometers and 2,400 kilometers. That's 4,600 kilometers! It seems like a great distance even to me. I see this as a problem. Uh-huh. Oh, maybe there's a shorter way. You mean there's hope? <laughs> feet into meters. I certainly can. Oh, good. <laughs> nine feet. Very nice, ugly. One, two, three, four. Oh, the agony of the feet. Oh. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Footloose. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How's that? Oh, very nice. And there we go. And ah. Will there be anything else? Excuse me, but this third meter doesn't seem to be complete. Ah, uh, no, ma'am. Nine feet is less than three meters. I see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay, let me help you there. Oh. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and there. Oh. Come back any time. Excellent. <laughs> 
Make it all in one trip. You can? Yes, sir. Look, by flying from Detroit to Bemidji and back, and then to Columbus and back, that's 4,600 kilometers, sir. But the distance from Columbus to Bemidji is 700 kilometers. 700 kilometers. But who said you had to fly between Bemidji and Columbus? Well, sir, if I take both packages, I can fly from Detroit to Columbus. I drop off the first package in Columbus. Then I go from Columbus to Bemidji and drop off the other package. Let's see, that's 1,200 plus 700. That's 1,900 kilometers, right? Right. Then I turn around and go back exactly the same way I went, from Bemidji to Columbus to Detroit. That's another 1,900 kilometers. That's 3,800 kilometers in all, sir. Say 38 instead of 46 is... Well, I said 800 kilometers, please! Nicely done, but you know there's a better way to do it, inspired by your original idea. You know how one idea can sometimes lead to another idea. Ooh, just like in real life, sir? Right, now from Detroit to Bemidji is 1,100 kilometers. Let us move, sir. <laughs> now that's already 100 kilometers less than the trip between Detroit and Columbus. Ooh, I think I know what you're gonna do, sir. Ooh, what a great idea, what a great idea! Now we know it's... 700 kilometers between Bemidji and Columbus. And now? And now we go right back the way we came. That's 1,800 kilometers. And we go back happy as we can be because the round trip is only 3,600 kilometers. Similar to your idea, but saving another 200 kilometers. Yes, sir. Well, smile. With our two heads together, we just saved a total of 1,000 kilometers. Sir, I thought you were going to do something else. Do? What more could I do? How can you improve on perfection? Well, sir, I thought you were going to do this. What? Go from here... Uh-huh. ...to here. Well, go from Columbus to Detroit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, because... Oh, be sir, I bet you knew it all along, and you just wanted me to figure it out, huh? <laughs> it's all right through me. Good work. Very good work. Uh, you are so... <laughs> Smart! Well, you see, if I fly from Detroit to Bemidji to Columbus, back to Detroit, all I have to do is add up the length of the size of the triangle that we made. You see, 1,100, 700, and 1,200. That's, uh, 3,000... 3,000 kilometers! Great hunk! That's much more efficient! Well, now it's gonna go back and forth and back and forth. That would have been 4,600 kilometers. Oh, gee, we saved 1,600 kilometers, sir! Congratulations on your solution. Thank you, sir. Well, I'm off to Bemidji. Off to Bemidji. Here you go. Thank you, sir. Oh, one last thing. What is it, Junior? Well, are there mountains along the route? Why? I'm afraid of heights. An eagle who's afraid of heights? How am I going to stay in business? <laughs> Come back here, you bold girl. Maybe I better change our motto to, uh, better late than never. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the challenger in this corner, weighing 98 pounds, the challenger instigator. The champion of the world, the terror of the East Coast, weighing in at 54 kilograms, metric electric. I'm a girl from across the sea. Does everything a little different from me? Drink a quart and she drinks a liter. Yeah. Hey. 
game shows but who's adding and here is the host who loves numbers the most larry cedar hey how you doing out there good to have you here welcome to the game everybody and you out there in addition land welcome to but who's adding i think we're going to have a sensational game today we got two great contestants let's bring them up give them a big hand come on up yeah! all right they look ready to play let's meet them playing blue today is samantha samantha how you feeling fine you a little excited a little nervous Boy, I am nervous, I tell you. All right, you're all set to go. Red is? Valerie. Valerie, and how are you today? Good. All right, you look ready to play. You've been practicing, haven't you? Yeah. Everyone's been practicing. We're all set to go. Let's turn around and check out the rules of the game. Now, this is the big board. The object of the game is to cover three squares in a row with your color, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Now, the numbers on the big board represent the sum you get when you add two numbers from the add-in board together. For example, if you put a ring on the four, and a ring on the five, what number can you cover on the big board? Nine. Nine, right, looks just like that. Okay, now the person who goes first will move both rings and announce their sum. After that, the next player can only move their color ring anywhere on the add-in board. Now you have 10 seconds to move your ring and call out the sum. If you don't do it in 10 seconds, you'll hear this. Whoops, means you ran out of time. Also, if you call out an incorrect sum, or if you call out a sum that's already been covered on the board, you will hear this. Ooh, that's a mistake. So if you run out of time or make a mistake, that means you lose your turn. Your opponent gets to move both rings. A big advantage. First player to win two rounds wins the game. All right, red will go first, and I'll move out of your way here. You set to go? You guys all excited? Yeah! yeah! All right, red, go! Come on! 11 red. Blue. Wow. Oh, wrong color, wrong color. Wow. Twelve red. Ten, ten. ten blue. Five seconds. Seven. seven red. Seven. Eleven blue. Oh. Been covered. That means that you get to go and move two rings. Valerie, ready? Red, go! Five! Five red! Oh! I'm oh, sorry, that was great. Valerie, that was a great round. You've won round one. We're gonna clear the board. Samantha, you lost. You get to start the next round. Try to tie it up, okay? The board is clear. Blue, go! Five blue. Oh, oh, wrong color, wrong color. Nine red. Ten blue. Wow. Twelve red. Five seconds. Fourteen blue. Oh! Excellent. All right. It's very exciting. It is all tied up. Okay, Valerie, you got a chance to win it here. Or Samantha, you could win it. We got both rings. Ready? The board is clear. Red, go. Eleven red. Ten blue. Nine red. 
Five blue. Four red. Five seconds. Eleven blue. Oh, it already it's, it's already covered. Okay, Valerie, you get to move both rings. Ready? Go. Seventeen. Seventeen red. Game. I got to tell you, that was exciting. I was really nervous there. All right, Valerie, for playing so well, you win the Square One TV calculator. For winning, you win it, as a matter of fact. And Samantha, for just doing such a great job and such a tough game, we're going to give you a Square One TV t-shirt. There you go. Thanks for playing. Thanks for giving your teammates such support. And we'll see you next time on But Who's At It? Are we on the air? Oh, hi. This just in. Sources close to the Mathematician General have said that one of the most important aspects of mathematics is logical, step-by-step, problem-solving. Film on the hour between 10 and 12. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. 3.43 p.m. in the Beansprout protest march it clobbered the traffic on the Pomona Freeway. We were working the day watch out of MathNet. My partner is George Frankly. The boss is Thad Green. My name is Monday. I'm a mathematician. We had just started to work on a kidnapping case when we got another rather bizarre assignment. We decided to look at the last scene from yesterday's show to get ourselves up to speed. What's up, Kate? Orson Kane, the millionaire eccentric, has apparently ordered a hamburger, and it's been deposited on its front lawn. Shouldn't they have called the Department of Sanitation? Uh-uh. Debbie, can you question Mrs. Balpeen for us? Sure thing, Kate. I don't get it, Kate. A kidnapping is more important than a hamburger. I know, George, but this hamburger is different. It's gigantic and it's made out of wood. Orson Charles Kane was an eccentric, no doubt about that. He was a millionaire many times over who indulged himself in what he called the finer things of life. Lavish parties, yellow journalism, controlled politicians. He liked practical jokes like hotfoots, sneezing powders, wars. His pet project was an extravagant museum and zoo complex which was unequaled in the Western world. He purchased rare and unusual items in his travels. His latest purchase was, apparently, an oak hamburger. Excuse us, sir. I'm Kate Monday. This is my partner, George. Frankly. Math, Math Net. Net. Hives Bottomley. Valley. Oh, well, the keys are in the car. Oh, here's my problem, young mathematician. This morning, a truck delivered that that artifact. The guard signed for it and told them to place it where you see it. Where did it come from? I don't know. Mr. Kane is forever buying unusual things for the museum. Probably Bob's Oak Boy. Would you lower the lid, please? I'm not clear what you want from us, Hives. We need to place that work of art into the museum. And in order to use the correct winch, we must know how much it weighs. I see. It's made of oak, huh? The box measures six feet by six feet by four feet, Kate. Is that important? Yes. We'll go back to the office, make some calculations, and get back to you. I'll take a picture, Kate. Well, I would appreciate all due speed. Mr. Kane will be back this evening, and he hates to see things littering up the lawn. I would like to move it inside. We understand, Hives. Strange, huh, Kate? What's that, George? That old man Kane would name his mansion after a sled. Okay, Kate. The problem is, in order to move that thing, we have to find out how much an oak hamburger box weighs. If we assume the box is solid and find its weight, we'll have a safe estimate. The hamburger in its box weighs less than a solid box would weigh. Right. First, we'll need to know the volume of the box in cubic feet. Then, when we know how much one cubic foot of oak weighs, we can calculate its total weight. Here's a model of the box. To find its volume, we should multiply its length by its width by its depth. 
So let's find the area of the top of the box. The length is six feet. The width is six feet. Six times six. The area is 36 square feet. Right, that's the area. But we want to know the volume. So we multiply the area times the depth of the box. So multiply 36 by four. The volume is 144 cubic feet. That's a good sized burger. But we still don't know how much it weighs because we don't know how much one cubic foot of oak weighs. But I do. I called the lumber yard and they told me that a cubic foot of oak weighs between 45 and 55 pounds. Mm. To be safe, let's use the heaviest weight. Better use your calculator. Okay. 55 pounds per cubic foot, 144 cubic feet. We multiply 55 times 144. That's 7,920 pounds. That's very heavy. And that's without the lettuce and tomatoes. I'll call Hives and tell him he'll need a crane that'll lift about 8,000 pounds, about four tons. Not a bad day's work. Hard. The next morning, I was a little late getting into the office. Had a dental appointment I'd been putting off. Good news, no cavities. Just needed a cleaning. Debbie Williams was in the squad room when I arrived. Hi, Debbie. Seen George? Morning, Kate. Yeah, he's getting half a cup of coffee. You know, George doesn't overindulge. Did you speak with Mrs. Balpeen? Uh-huh. Morning, Kate. Care for some coffee? Uh, I guess I don't care for any either. What'd you find out? Well, her husband has a lot of special skills. Hard to tell which one the kidnappers needed. Really? She let me borrow this photo album. He's sort of a jack of all trades, master of some. Kind of a renaissance man? I'd call him pre-renaissance, actually. He doesn't quite have it all together. For instance? Here's Mr. Balpeen as a clown. He works kids' birthday parties. That looks like fun. Here he is teaching a course in automotive body work. And this is Hans as a hang glider instructor. And here he is as a plumber. And this? He worked on the cover for a while. That's some career. Here he is as a test acrobat, trying out the trapeze at a circus. And here he is as a human cannonball. And this is Hans as an MC at an accountant's convention. And this last one? What's he doing? Cocktail pianist. Just a one-nighter. Hard to believe anybody would kidnap him for those kind of skills. Try telling it to his wife. She's very upset. No word from the APB? No one has seen anyone resembling him? Debbie, make a list of those skills and see if anyone is having a convention in town. Any circuses coming in? Check to see if there are any big birthday parties. Sounds like a lot of long shots. I know, but it's all we've got to go on now. Okay. Mrs. Balpeen said she'd call us the minute they contact her to discuss the ransom. Mathnet, frankly. Mr. Kane? Oh, good morning, sir. I was just out at your place yesterday. Do I like it? Do you mow that great big lawn all by your... Yes, sir. I see, sir. Got you, sir. Right away, sir. Orson Charles Kane? Uh-huh. He'd like to see us. There's been a burglary. You mean someone stole his hamburger? Nope. Someone stole the despair diamond. Mr. Kane. The math net people who helped my staff move that ridiculous thing in here yesterday. We didn't help them move it. We estimated how much it weighed. But as a matter of fact, the movers found it quite a bit lighter than you thought it would be. Oh? Well, anyway, your hamburger looks nice in here. Goes well with the pink flamingo and the chocolate-covered bust of Bach and... It is not my hamburger. I never saw it before. Never mind that now. The world's most priceless diamond is missing. When was it taken? Sometime during the night. I saw it last night at 10. And Mr. Kane found it uh, missing this morning at 8. Can you give us a motive? Motive? Try $50 million. That's what that diamond was worth. 
Any other reason you can think of as to why someone might want to take it? Do you know how the thief got in? I understand your security system is practically fail-safe. It is. No one gets in or out of here unless we know about it. There's only one entrance to the grounds, and it's guarded 24 hours a day. Might have been an inside job. One of my staff? Impossible. They've been with me forever. Easy enough to say, Mr. Kane. How's that? Obviously, your system isn't 100% dependable because someone got in and got out with the despair diamond. Yes, yes, yes. I want that rock back. Whoever took it can't sell it. It's too well known. The minute he tries to sell it, the police will be notified and we'll have our man. We can just sit back and wait till he tries to sell it then. And maybe he won't try to sell it. Maybe he'll just possess it as I did. The thing we have to do right now is find out how your security system broke down. That's kind of like closing elevator doors after the horse has flown the coop, isn't it, Kate? It, not really. If the thief could make off with the diamond... She's right. He could get back in here and rob me blind. Wait! Hive said the burger weighs less than we thought. Maybe it's hollow. Hollow? You know, empty inside. I mean, even though it has pickles, tomatoes, onions, and... Hinges. 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 Good work, George. I think we know how our man got in. First, let me show you how to make a Fibonacci series and then a terrific magic trick. You think it's easy? Grabbing your brightest smile all the time, hitting you on the head. Party Balloon Company, Ace Balloon Rental. Kate, I was thinking about how the robber got out of Kane's estate. Uh-huh. Ace Balloon Rental. Maybe the thief.